Welcome back guys to Trails of Cold Steel, where last episode we found the Celtic market having more problems as a dispute due to the duplicate permit reignited. Both stool owners having had their stools destroyed and goods stolen with a provincial army sweeping it under the rug with threats of arrest. With Rean and crew then offering to investigate, they completed their task for the day and after gathering info about suspicious activity to the night, they headed towards the nature park with Red Moon Rose Chapter 3 in hand. So we reached Lunaria Nature Park! Lunaria Nature Park, huh? Seems less like a park and more like a forest. Yeah, it really does feel a little out of place sitting smack dab in the middle of farmland as far as the eye can see. It may have had some religious significance in ages past. Perhaps it was a place where the animists of ancient times chose to enshrine the spirits of the forest. There's a place much like that in my hometown. Yeah, there's one in mine, too. That park ranger made it sound like there would be people here. If they really are the culprits, maybe they've run away already? Hmm. This woodland is too dense to reliably enter it whether anyone awaits within. Yeah. Hmm, what's this? It's... A bracelet? Hmm. How did a bracelet come to be in a place such as this? Just as I thought. This bracelet has the same design on it as the ones that the merchant from the capital was planning on selling. Really? You're sure? Positive. There's not a doubt in my mind that it was designed by the same person. Care to give a second opinion on that, Laura? I'm hardly qualified to weigh in on recent trends, but there do seem to be a number of similarities between this bracelet and the merchant's goods. So the fact that it's here means... Yeah. It's extremely likely the culprits we're looking for are inside this park. Sure seems that way to me. <laughs> hmm. It only opens from the inside. I suppose that leaves us little choice. Are you going to destroy it? Uh, will you be able to...? The lock seems quite solid, but my sword should be strong enough to... Wait. I'll do it. I can get it done more quietly. Oh? R really? What are you going to do? The Eight Leaves One Blade School's Fourth Form, Autumn Leaf Cutter. Hmm? Huh? Seriously? Wow! You cut it right in two! I did, thankfully. Spectacular. It's an honor bearing witness to one of the skills of the Eight Leaves School. <laughs> Thanks, but I'm still more or less a beginner. Anyway, we don't have much time left. Let's head inside and see if we can find them. Right! We need to find them before the sun starts to set. Looks like we can still make it after all. Excellent. Come then, we must make haste. So we go into Lunalia Nature Park. I said Lunaria. Always get things wrong. Oh, oh! Then you hide from me, little treasure chest in the corner. I see you have an EP charge too. A bit of a bigger one. I guess now we've unlocked more slots and got more EP, it kind of makes sense to give us a little bit bigger at this point in time. Let's head inside then. The creak of the gate was louder than anything else. This is current area one. There seems to be a few areas to go through. There's tons of little stone monuments in here. Yeah, what do you think they're supposed to be? I imagine they were made by the animists in this province. Animists? <laughs> of course. I was wondering how your attack worked. Well, let's just quickly rest, just based on the fact we've used a little bit of EP with Elliot. 
Always best to restore when we get the choice. And let's head inside. There's some gravestones up there, it looks like. Gravestones everywhere, but look at it. <laughs> Bonk. Now's our chance. Bonk and mushroom on the head. Have good luck for the rest of your life. My turn. That's how it works, right? A jelly shroom. View specifics. Have no specifics. Sweet fire. They take fairly good physical damage, so we'll use that as an advantage. It doesn't look like anything necessarily imbalances them that well, then. I guess we need to analyze them to find that out. Analyzing enemy attack patterns. I've got it. All right, week to the first thing. I don't even know why it's for anymore. <laughs> of course. Well, that one's unbalanced even further. Ta! Slash, right? No. Blind Ta! for four turns Go. on that then? Well, if we know that we can slash, we'll now probably get a lot of them in. I'll take you up. Definitely helps us out when we do that, doesn't it? Ha! Can't say no. That slash didn't really go in our favor, though. Maybe we should My at least turn. get one detection on each enemy, then. That's Poison that. for seven Let's turns. Moving. That seems a bit much. <laughs> when you're a beginner, yeah. When you're beginning of school of Super Fighter, that still leaves me to be pretty good. <laughs> Obviously, yeah. I mean, usually it would teach you stuff like that as a beginner level, anyway. They keep stuff like that hidden a bit more. I and mean, when you go to a lot of places... <gasps> ah, it's bum! My bum! I've got this! I can do this! You kind of get forced to go through trainee forms first. Our chance. We can do this! So we don't those who uh, will quit in senses. Now's our chance! I'll take you up! I think we know what they're weak to do then, this. don't we? By defeating one we've analyzed enough after all. Yeah, an opening. Weak to getting hit really hard. <laughs> That's what I have to say about this. Oh, we did it. I mean, everything's just weak to getting hit very hard though, so it's a good thing. But they usually don't give weird EI techniques like that to beginners. It's usually something that would be a lot later on. Only a double advantage this time? My turn. No extra damage, I am sad. I can get all the leaf kind of... Only two? Oh, come on. You can be a little bit closer to each other, can you? There. Maybe I'll get a poison. Go. we got to break on one. I'll take you up. It's my turn. It's a good bit of extra damage after all. I wasn't expecting you to be able to pierce that one. Let's go on Big Jelly Shroom here. That's nice whacker damage. Can I get multiple here? No. I guess we'll take out that one. We've got an arts up here. Instant arts heat wave. Oh, no one's close enough. But it's considering it's zero arts and they're weak to fire. Go. We can get the nuke on there. Didn't get the slash right. bonus again. That guy's burning. No. I've got you. We're doing quite varying damage when you look at it. Right. Fire. Here we go. Sometimes we do 700, okay. sometimes we do Stay 400. Well, quite close to another level. Okay, that's a nice bit of sepith. That is yet again a, well, a slot upgrade, pretty much. I'm not going to go all the way back and do it, though, sadly. Though, <laughs> tempting as that may be. Curia bomb. Can I get there in time before he turns around? Yep. Now's our chance. We can do this. Oh, we're going to start with some My criticals? Turn. Well, there's it's a seal. Turn. This is going to cause an unbalance. I missed. I may as well just one-shot no. this guy. Oh, no, we didn't even get one-shot. I've got you. My turn. Here we go. Ha. 
can't believe you missed. Maybe we need some accuracy on our bow lady there. Marina's about to level up. I'm wondering how much experience we actually need as well when I think about it. For, for example, these guys' other corpses. Next is 180. Angel, all the money for recover from KO. Recover 10% HP and CP plus 10 activates once per battle. What would that then change to? Brave as well, begin battle with strength raise. One turns of strength plus 25%, so that'll be two turns. I don't know, experience isn't that much to get, I don't think. Right, which pass do I have not gone down yet? This one for a chest. Huh, is that a treasure chest? My turn, of course. It might be. It's Never a big red chance. one, too. We like big red ones. Go. Oh, no. It's my turn. No piercing. Go. I don't mind stepping up, but... Who to go on? Now. Go. That works. Right. Unbalance them. We should keep going. Let's keep her S break in the hole as the levels up. Right. More clear gelatin. We have to get five to every stat when we level up, don't we? A citrus bottle is in the chest. This way is a dead end. Yeah, this park covers a lot more area than I was expecting. Oh, a treasure chest. <laughs> yes, it's a treasure chest and it's a dead end. Okay. <laughs> You had to follow that up with, oh, it's a treasure chest at the end there to compound it a little bit more. Hi. Oh, my poor brain. Uh, what did I get from that chest? I have no clue. Hello. What are you? That looks like a strong one. Be careful. Do I not want to fight it then? I mean, I'll slash it in the butt. Oh, I won't! He turned around! Right. You can't just turn around, they're level 13, Gordy Chiefs. Damn, you didn't let me get my special special on? He turned around good. He was wary to my previous up, strategies. Of course. I'm not sure I can deal with that. Ta Still do a fair whack of damage go. to them, though. Alright, let's do this! Yeah, Strong one really based on level more than anything else. Well, we still wanted to fight it's it no matter turn. what, so that's gonna work. Turn to flames. Burn. No one balanced, but we did get the burn. Oh, this guy's on a critical. He caused faint, beating Laura to a pulp. My I mean, turn. Laura got her, her health back, sure, but that wasn't good. Okay, do we have any arts that can cure that kind of thing at the moment? I don't think we do at this point. What do we have that can cure faint? Stimulants. Huh. They're just you the big mashing face. guys at this point. Here we go. Let's get her up and running again. Let's get an autumn leaf cutter there. on the two of these guys then. Go. I'll take you up. ATS delay means we move the order a little bit. Turn to flames. Burn. I'm gonna get the burn and then the burner finish them off on their move. <laughs> yep. Of course. Strategy. Honest. Hey. You can't move, but you can burn. My turn. Right. With that case, then. Attack from range and life will be good. Oh, we did it. Ah, we didn't really get much experience on that one due to that. Alright! But we got one level. Well, that was a strong one. Stronger than us, but we're catching up on his level. Right, how big's this area then? Well, we got our book to read shortly, so I'll do that in a second, but we may as well explore this way first. Reviving Bum, some Time Sepif. Oh, there's a stream here. This seems like a nice spot. Can I fish? Which way are you facing, Mushroom Boy? Oh, 
Well, now I know. Why you still chase me? I find aiming with her Now's kind of hard. We can do this. My turn. Now's our chance. I was wondering I if I'd pull off a resounding beat just to get my HP back it. there, but I really don't need to after that. Let's just finish off that one then. Of course. Hey. One opponent right. left. Uh, let's just move for you this turn. <laughs> uh, let's just move. A oh, you took the HP heal. That's not what I meant. Damn it. Is everybody okay? I wanted to move so Rune got the uh, health up. That failed miserably. I've only just begun. Well, no, we'll level up. Hey! Failed absolutely miserably. Dear bum. Is that a stream? <laughs> a treasure chest. I haven't actually done any fishing while I've been here, which I probably should have looked for at least a spot to do, because getting fishing points for training is not that bad. Here we go! Right! <laughs> You're a different form as well. The other one had a more sharper protuberance, one side. The advantage is ours! Here we go! They're definitely different, guys. Blade pincers now. I was sealed, turn. can't move. <laughs> that one's a bit stronger then. Now. I was say, we don't know about the unbalance for him, but well, we of just course. found out a little bit there, didn't we? So they are Pierce, of course, but. Hey. Take out that one. I know he's sealed and can't really move anyway. Poison. Right. No unbalance. Right. Of course. Hi. Easy, easy. We should keep going. Hi, Obi. Really, everyone to level twelve. Right. So, one treasure chest this way. Should we read uh, our lovely little story when we reach the bridge? Our next chapter of Red Moon Rose. Chest. I'll take a two advantage. We can do this. Here no we go. extra damage, but still the time delay. Go. I'll pick you up. I was amazed we couldn't get the other one. That. Fire. Hmm. We hit both here. Only one. <laughs> See that should hit the other one. My turn. Huh. Here we go. Come on, Reed. You're on that one. Smash is our speciality. It's my turn. Zero arts. Huh. Didn't get the kill. You're kidding me. My turn. Of course. Now, if I move you this turn, will you go after me? Great. Go. There you go. Have 10% HP here. Huh. Great. Okay. It's safe for now. Level 12. Nicely done. Airstrike found in chest. I can't sense anyone in this area. Thank you for telling me. I would expected there not to be anyone in the dead end, so great information. Great information. We don't have anyone with really wind courts that needs to be done at this point, so won't be really using an airstrike for anyone, I don't think. Well, that said, we don't actually have any air attacks for anyone, so it might be good to put one on. I mean, Heatwave's pretty good, but with that knowledge in mind, it might not be a bad idea. So we've got the Breath that heals out as an area with Purifying Breath. What should I switch it out for? Soul Blur? Causes Faint is pretty good. Let's switch out Heatwave. We've got Fire across the party. I know we can't because that requires a red slot. Damn it. We've got Detection. Well, detection is technically useful. Then we want her to be hitting people in the face. That's my problem with all of this. I've already got Aqua Bleeds enough. We don't need the Aqua Bleed thing, do we? Haha. 
Yes, that's a good point. That's a very good point. We're just doubling up at that point. Any fish spots here? No such luck. Let's go in that treasure chest. Maybe that's the nice one. Fire! What's up, if? Breath is an like aerial, yeah. Be careful. Wow, it really comes for you as well. Oh, you can't preemptive it? That tells me a lot. Okay. That's interesting. That's why. Keep it up, everyone. It's like mini boss monsters. Have I ever played Persona games? I've never played a Persona game ever. Go. There's too many games in the world to have said, like you know, to have actually played all of these games. All right, let's do this. Yeah, okay. understood. I will have to say that is this. one of the limiting factors on this. Turn to flames. Burn. If only I got an unbalance. Right. Uh, should I just go armor breaker then and just make that one an easy to mash Shatter. target? Except he'll go next and then he'll lose that anyway. Oh, oh God. wouldn't mind that. I got you. That's down for four too. <gasps> ah, we're all good. No faint this time. He can't move because sealed as well, so he's really dead. Which means you're our target, really. Here we go. No one else but you. There. Nice views, but. Right. Turn to flames. Burn. Go. An opening. Nice double team. EP heal. <laughs> As he dies slowly from fiery death. Poor guy. Huh? <laughs> I mean, we could just let him, like... It's the meanest thing to do. Go. But also, somewhat funny. Oh, he got to... <laughs> oh. Okay, it's safe for now. The burn was enough. We'll just let him burn horribly to death. It's okay. Pinned to the ground, unable to move, on fire. Uh, it's a treasure chest. And the coral ring. We've got a few new attachments, to be fair. So what have we got? Citrus bowl prevents faint. Coral ring prevents seal. So movement. Preventing faint would be pretty good a lot of the time, but we've already got to prevent seal there on the coral bracelet. Got prevent mute, prevents KO. I say the proxy puppet's not necessarily what we need. I'd rather that. And we haven't got a proxy puppet there. Coral ring prevents seal. Which is not like you really need to move much. I think we'll be good with that. Better check if I can, uh do anything I'm getting like an exclamation mark point would appear sad times all right Linnean H but we, we haven't read the book yet the monsters are respawning already down there as well let's go get the last chest and read Red Moon Rose chapter 3 I miss those boxes too <laughs> unbelievable turn around Turn around. Thank you. Why go into a battle if it's not a preemptive? Fire! Now's our chance. We can Should do this. Oh, it's a panda. My turn. Poor panda. It's a sassa panda. Now it's a stick, and it looks like it's gonna beat the crap out of me with it. Interesting. Hoping for a stagger there. Let's uh, examine the Sasa Panda. Analyzing enemy attack patterns. They're they're endangered. Why would it. we do this? Oh, we get you material from it. That's pretty good, to be fair. Uh, maybe we have to kill it pretty fast. I don't know. My turn. Can I just. Hi. Sasa Panda, poor guy. He's now blinded, Sasa Panda. I feel sorry for him. 
I can do this. Didn't even get anything. Fire! My sad yeah! times are real. An opening. Of course. Huh. We should new material going. would be really good to get. I'm missing one new material from a level up, aren't I? Maybe we'll find another Sasa Panda. Maybe the same monster respawns always gives us the same packs so you could just got run away far enough to get it to respawn and there's just keep trying to farm it for a new material. So that's your bump. Alright, before we head in the third area then, I think it's time for story time, because I'm making you guys wait. How do we go there? <laughs> story time! It's Red Moon Rose! We are up to chapter <laughs> Wait, 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 what? 18 pages! 20 pages! 30 pages! 30 pages! <laughs> okay! <laughs> what?! They're getting their proper size now, aren't they? Yeah, everyone get popcorn really quick. That's a lot- that's gonna be like 10 minutes of reading. <laughs> so here we begin. Ch oh yeah, take a drink first, that's a good idea. Chapter 3. Foreboding. The next morning, Alphonse found himself in his commanding officer's, Garrard's office. He had come to request permission to independently investigate the vampire murders. Garrard scratched his head before giving Alphonse a questioning look, his eyes filled with the kind of vitality one would expect from a much younger man. You want to pursue that case all on your own? Alphonse cleared his throat nervously. He was well aware that he was ask what he was asking was completely unreasonable. Not my own. The civilian has agreed to help me conduct my investigation. The two of us will be working together. It sounded pretty weak to him, but Rose had been adamant that they keep the truth of the matter to themselves. It wouldn't be to the benefit of society for the existence of vampires to become widely known, she had insisted. As such, try and arrange for us to be able to investigate the murders by ourselves, without interruption. Aside from a cool farewell for now, those had been her last words before disappearing into the night. And what she said made sense. There was simply no way that Garrod would believe that vampires existed, even if it was his surrogate son trying to persuade him. After all, despite seeing a ghoul with his very own eyes, part of Alphonse still wanted to believe that it had all been a dream. To compound the problem further, for reasons that Alphonse wasn't privy to, Rose seemed opposed to anything other than investigating the matter covertly. As such, her joining the team formed to officially investigate the murders was off the table. Alphonse was therefore left with no choice but to propose that the two of them investigate together in secret. Alphonse was not surprised then to see Garrod's less than willing expression. Listen now, as your guardian I've got a responsibility to look after you. That's why I want to raise you to be a fine soldier, and why I don't want you putting your life in danger for no good reason. Alphonse flushed. He'd already been removed from the team investigating the murders, as well as taken off night patrol duty. Garrard was well aware of his fixation with the case. That was exactly why he was afraid that Alphonse might end up going too far in his attempts to solve it and get injured, or worse. Garrard, sir, I understand exactly what you're trying to say, and I appreciate your concern, but... Hmm. Seeing Alphonse's determination, Garrard hesitated. The boy standing before him was calm with clear eyes, but previously there had been recklessness. Now purpose and resolve seemed to rule. After a lengthy silence, he let out a sigh of resignation. You really do take after your father. He smiled fondly, but quickly switched to his official commanding officer voice. I expect to give your utmost to successfully solving the mystery behind these murders. However, I will approve this mission only on the condition that you report daily on the results of your investigation. Ga Alphonse almost responded in his usual casual tone, but caught himself just in time. He coughed, cleared his throat, and stood to attention. Garrett chuckled. Just be sure not to put yourself needlessly in danger, understood? And if anything happens, inform me immediately. Yes, sir. Alphonse gave a deep bow, grateful for his guardian's kindness. I see that everything went well. That is good news. The two of them were in the corner of the shopping district, where the first victim of the vampire murders had been found. It was the middle of the day, but the alleyway in which they stood was gloomy and draped in shadows by the looming buildings that surrounded it. The second he had stepped into the narrow passageway, Rose had appeared out of nowhere, just like the previous day. Because the place where Alphonse had been attacked by the ghoul the previous night was currently under investigation by the Garrard team, they thought it best to steer clear of it for the rest of the day. As such, they had decided to examine the scene of an earlier murder instead. Unlike the previous night, Rose had neither her coat nor her sword with her. Instead, she wore a simple dress in a local style. Anyone seeing her for the first time wouldn't be able to tell that she was anything more than a perfectly ordinary girl. According to Rose, neither vampires nor ghouls were able to operate in daylight unless battle-ready wear was unnecessary. Everyday clothing also had the benefit of allaying suspicion by blending in, she said. It was fine logic in theory, but with Alphonse still garbed in his military uniform, they made for an unusual pairing. As such, Alphonse couldn't help but let out a sigh of relief when he realised how few people were in the surrounding area. The scene of the first murder still had a solemn air about it. Alphonse set about scouring the area, and as he mused over the case details involving the victim, 
a question came to mind. Thinking about it, I never heard about any of the earlier victims turning into ghouls. Is that because you've been defeating them? Rose shook her head. No, in previous cases I was able to purify the bodies with thaumaturgy before they turned into ghouls. I would rather not harm the bodies of the deceased if I can help it. Thaumaturgy, as Rose explained it, was the collective name for special techniques used by a small number of people belonging to the Septian Church. The power of thaumaturgy was also, apparently, the reason why Rose's rapier and Alphonse's short sword were capable of defeating ghouls and vampires. And yes, I know I'm probably saying thaumaturgy wrong. <laughs> Curious, Alphonse asked Rose if she was connected to the church, to which she responded, Feel free to think of it that way. He itched to probe her more on the subject, but she began explaining the particulars about ghouls, so we let it drop. Since the murders had started, it seemed that the type it took for a corpse to turn into a ghoul was decreasing with every kill. Alphonse's encounter with the ghoul the previous night was the first occasion that she'd been unable to purify the victim in time. As such, she had been left with no choice but to fight. Still, that possibility was well within my expectations. Not the first time it's happened, after all. That someone like yourself would appear and try to get involved certainly wasn't, however. Rose said with a giggle, causing Alphonse's ears to turn pink at the tips. Uh, anyway, he said, crouching down to inspect the ground level. Have you managed to gather anything about the culprit from your previous investigations? Rose nodded. Judging by the bite marks left on the victims, I believe that the vampire is likely male. Furthermore, despite victims being found all across the city, the bite marks look the same as one another. That suggests the work of a single vampire. Beyond that, however... Rose fell silent. Is something bothering you? Alphonse asked without thinking. Yes, actually. It may be possible that the vampire lurking in the city is... She stopped mid-sentence. Her gaze was focused on something behind Alphonse. Turning around, he saw a young man in a military uniform much like himself. It was someone he knew. Elroy, what are you doing here? I was about to ask you the same thing, the other man grumbled. Elroy was a fellow member of the Garrard team who had joined around the same time as Alphonse did. That combined with the two being roughly the same age, one might expect them to get along well. But in reality, they usually ended up arguing about everything. It had been like that for almost as long as Alphonse had known him. I heard you formed a separate team to check up on the murders, but I had no idea that it was just a pretext to be meeting a woman during working hours, Elroy sneered. Alphonse stifled, stifled his annoyance. At least it seemed as if the other man hadn't overheard their earlier conversation. Clearing his throat, Alphonse said evenly, She's a civilian who's assisting with my investigation, so knock it off. And you? What are you doing here? Hmm, nothing in particular. I just happen to be passing by. We've got to patrol a much wider area now thanks to all this vampire nonsense. Alphonse stood and gave him a cold look. Watch what you're saying. People in this area have lost families and friends because of these murders. Elroy snorted and cast an uncaring glance at the spot where the first victim had been found. <laughs> I mean, seriously? Vampire murders? We're supposed to be the Imperial Army, not a bunch of country braces. Are we seriously considering the possibility that fairy tale creatures like that exist? Besides, what kind of idiot goes out at night when there's a serial killer on the loose? They were asking for it, if you ask me. People need to stay in their damn homes and stop making more work for us. You son of a. Enraged by the sheer callousness of Elroy's words, Alphonse started towards him. Or tried to, rather. Strong, unyielding fingers held him by the arm. Completely expressionless and without so much as a glance to Elroy, Rose whispered, Arguing with him serves no purpose. That time would be better, sent invest better spent investigating. She spoke calmly, but her words were sharp and dismissive. What she said was right, though, and hearing it was enough for Alphonse to cool his temper. As she said, there are more important things to be doing. He has sworn that he would solve these murders and put the past behind him, and that needed to be his foremost priority. He took a deep breath to regain his composure, the reassuring weight of the silver sword hidden in his uniform further reminded him of what he needed to do. Watching them, Elroy gave a bored, derisive laugh. Oh, and civilian helper, whatever you are, then you go wandering around at night either. The last thing the army needs is more dead bodies to clear up. And with a mocking wave, he left them. At their inspection of the first crime scene, Alphonse and Rose spent the remainder of the day scrutinizing the scenes of the second and third murders, but in the end their search yielded no fruit. After reporting their progress to Garard, he made his way to the Allegre, where he had promised to meet Rose to discuss how they would proceed with their investigation. The city around him was bathed in the orange glow of the setting sun, when Alphonse finally stepped into the sparsely populated town. He found Rose sitting at a table near one of the windows. Once again, she was wearing the navy coat from their very first meeting. It seemed safe to assume that the rapier she used that night was inside too. Evening, she called out to him. I was expecting you to be here sooner. Alphonse didn't reply. He was too busy staring at the girl sitting opposite her. What's wrong, Luca? Luca turned at the sound of her name, eyes so wide and moist that tears threatened to fall at any moment. Uh, Alfie! Just what is this woman to you? Wh what? Perplexed, he looked over in Rose's direction as if seeking an explanation. Rose favoured him with a bland expression. All I did was walk into this tavern and state, I would like an out-of-the-way table to discuss the future of Elle, and she has been pressing me. We've had endless questions ever since. She sighed. 
and shrugged her shoulders as she understood the situation no better than Alphonse did. Seeing this, he let out an even greater sigh. Before Luca could launch into another interrogation, Alphonse set about explaining Rose's role as a civilian helper, aiding an army investigation, and after several reassurances, he was eventually able to clear up the misunderstanding. Luca's relief seemed to fill her with renewed energy. Cheerfully, she bounded up from their table and made her way into the back of the tavern again. With her departure, so too left the gazes of the other curious and amused patrons. Rose and Alphonse bent to discuss, well, bent to discussing their investigation. Vampires, Rose elaborated, were only able to use their powers at night. During the day, they were no different from ordinary humans. Unfortunately, this meant that even if they were to encounter one, neither of them would be able to tell. If they hoped to end the murders, they would first need to find some kind of clue as to the vampire's true identity. At one point during the conversation, Alphonse went pale at the thought that they might have to exhume the corpses of previous victims in order to reinvestigate them. Rose assured him that would not be necessary. To his great relief, she had already checked them thoroughly for clues. Even that gruesome task had yielded a little more information than the similarities between the bite marks though. Their vampire foe was a cunning one. A number of bodies and lack of clues all pointed towards a careful killer, who more than likely was living right there among them as an ordinary human. After working their way for the simple meal that Luca brought them, Rose casually glanced over to the back of the tavern. You seem rather close to that girl, she murmured. It took a few moments for Alphonse to realise who Rose was referring to. Yeah, I suppose you could say. I've known her for ten years now, after all. He had first met Luca when he had brought he to Heimdalla by Garrod. Initially, he had stayed in a house near the tavern, and being brought by it often, the two of them quickly became friends. As an orphan, Luca's support over the years meant more to him than words could express. Telling Rose all of this, Alphonse could feel his cheeks heating. He began fidgeting awkwardly. I'm a little envious, Rose said. As <laughs> she spoke, Alphonse noticed a change in her expression and tone. Usually she said things sharply or with an air of cool detachment. Her face also but rarely betrayed her inner thoughts. Now though, he thought he caught a hint of loneliness. Unable to let this pass unnoticed, Alphonse opened his mouth to comment. Suddenly, Rose jumped up out of her seat. Her chair fell to the ground with a crash. Once again, the two of them became the subject of a room full of gazes, but she paid that fact no mind and stared out of the window, her eyes open wide. What? What is it? What's wrong? Alphonse whispered loudly. It's nearby. I can sense it. It? What do you mean? The vampire, she hissed. No sooner as she said it, she raced over to the tavern's owner who was busy at the back of the building. Alphonse chased after her. He had never seen her in such a panicked state before. Where's the young lady who was here earlier? Rose asked the puzzled tavern owner who didn't appear to have any idea who she was referring to. It was then that Alphonse realised that he didn't see Luca anywhere, and hadn't seen since she brought them their food half an hour before. After telling this to the owner, he finally seemed to realise what he was being asked. Now you mention it, I would have expected to be back by now. I asked to run an errand over the grocery store opposite here. Alphonse and Rose exchanged a glance and instantly understood what the other was thinking. Overcome with a sense of great foreboding, the two of them rushed out of the shop without saying a word. And so ends story time yet again. I did say it would take 10 minutes. 10, 11, 12, I need a drink now. Well, these stories are a lot bigger than Carnelia. Or Gambler Jack. For now. We'll see what can be bigger. You timed me, did you? 11 minutes, 45 seconds. Go me. Well, I promised you I'd read. And a bit of story time. It's never a bad thing. I'll get a save on in the meantime as well. Whatever. Ah. I'm better written than Carnelia, in your opinion. Oh well. I guess when you give more pages to it, you can definitely write. You've definitely got more room for leeway. Thanks, Daddy Ollis. I've been getting comments on YouTube about other series as well. They love story time. Just how deep does this forest go? Lee? We must be pretty far in now. I'd imagine we're almost there. They just want some videos with me reading books. Like, even now, not just you guys have said it in the Twitch chat, but other things as well. I'm like, nah, I'm not an audio back kind of voice for that. You need to be deep and imposing in character to have a voice like that. Wrong button! Fire! That's better. Now's our chance! We can do this! I feel like eccentric voices are Here the I ones go. needed for like books like that. Well we got another Sassa Panda! <laughs> Very dodgy Sassa Panda. Fire! Right! Well you're not doing well with the uh, whole locking them down there, so Let's keep trying to hit. Right. It's you to hit right. this guy. Because that'll be a one shot. My turn. Keep hitting the Sasa Panda. Okay, he's not as dodgy as I thought he would be. Try to get a stagger? Nope. <laughs> we'll leave you with this. We'll go for that. Right. Drops a chest. Probably right. not the best kind of chest we want, though. Now. I've got you. 
Oh well, yeah, it's Blade for them, isn't it? When in doubt, look to Laura. So is fist bump. You've saved me more than once too. Angel has reached level two. Finally, the orbs level up too. Or the master quartzes. Or the money recovered from KO. What else is she gonna get now? Fortuna has been learned. Okay, and also it's gone up to recover 25% HP and 25 CP. Activates once a battle for the automatic KO revive, as well as all those nice stat increases. Grave reach level two. All right, we got Forte, a strength buff. Two turns of strength, 25% she starts with now. But just the extra stats is all I really matter. Hey, hey. Uh, it's a yes, it's a treasure chest. Now I'm pressing the wrong buttons. Smoke grenade. This chest looks different from the other chests. Hmm. <laughs> Suspicious. Majorly. <laughs> Burn it with fire. Well, this could be a harder fight then. Hi. <laughs> Come on then. My turn. That's a lot of guys. Well, then, now is the time to use crafts, right? If I can get an Earth Cleaver on these two guys, I should be able to slow down their speed. No. I've got you. Didn't quite finish that one off, however. We've got a Baboon on a critical. He's not going to reach us, right? We've basically <coughs> stuck their movement down My to turn. nothing, which is fine by me. Now, here's the bits where I want to motivate and All get right, the, like, the buffs here. Resounding beat would be great. It's my turn. Okay. Shall I finish off that blade pincer? It's on the critical turn. The other monkey shouldn't be able to reach me after all. Right. That's working. Resounding beat. Give it up, everyone. I would like to get blue lullaby out as well. Should be able to regen most of that, though that's a lot of criticals coming my way, actually. Hurty hurt. Turn to flames. Burn! Now! And open Let's make sure with the extra imbalance we can get a really solid hit. Okay, he's in range now and faint. I mean, technically, everything's in a great area now for me to use my special CP-ish kind of things. But equally, I can get quite a lot of guys in attacks here. There. That's another guy oh. down. Do I get her up and get her ready to fight again? I feel like that might be the best idea to do. She can do the crazy big slash thing again. Or I could just get her to wipe out everyone in a different right. way. I mean, Earth Cleaver's pretty damn good. I mean, equally, I could Earth Cleaver on these two and probably wipe them out. I don't know. Still on these two. It's a pretty powerful technique, after all. Only you missed for once so we could get the counter. Right, so let's see. Golden Sphere, in which I can target it a little bit. Zero arts, why not? Yeah. Damage over quite a few guys. Someone didn't bother attacking, which means I probably get an all leaf cutter on pretty much everyone, right? Yeah? There. Now that wiped out free. Which leaves just you left, who's managed to basically shrug off every attack. It's my Let's turn. hope this unbalances. Goal. An opening. Goal indeed. And our health's pretty good. When in doubt, look to Laura. They do like making Laura faint. Yeah. You've saved me more than once too, you know. Well, that was a bit more of a battle. And our first monster chest. That's a ton of experience. Not enough link experience to level up that. We've got a lot of Sephiroth mess. Obtain a heat wave. Uh, we've already got that. <laughs> Fire! Fire! 
I mean, we, 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 we kind of have that as a spell anyway, so yeah. Oh well. It does what it does. Monster chests. At least we can definitely tell by design which one's which. Doesn't have stats? It probably does, yes. But I have no orphan slots currently and I'm not going to mess around with the slots, so we'll leave it as it is right now. Look to it in the future. I to get my turn of CP back. Now's our chance. We can do this. Thanks for the cheer for the first monster chest. Here we go. I don't know if it's worthy. Six, go. Wasn't expecting to okay, get that. I can do this. It's Pierce we want to get after all. Yes. Now. Now we're getting imbalances galore. My turn. I just want you to level up on your link arts there, sir. Let's go. go. Cool. Right. These guys are falling over like crazy. No. Oh. I've got you. My turn. That was a crazy I amount of unbalances. Fire. I'll take it. All right, let's keep on moving. I don't switch up my links, no. But at this point in time, I'm quite happy with the links I've got. I really like the way they're set up. I think this is it like obviously this is a default kind of setup for them ish. I don't know, but it's a really good setup, which is probably why it's default. That's a lot of monsters in that pit over there. Blimey hell! What the hell? What's going on over here? Fire! Mushrooms galore! Please look the other way, Miss Mushroom. Or Mrs. I guess we can't judge. Now's our chance. Let's get him. Go. Six. Go. Come on, we need to get you leveled up on your link gauge. Do it. Pierce isn't really going to help me on that. I wish they were close enough. Still not dead? Right. Hey. Go. Right, let's split off here. Now's our chance. I'll you up. Well, they like to get their links on. EP heal is pretty good considering. My turn. And a step up for a last strike. You still have a lot of training to do. God, they're so close. How much is it? Well, re level up. I did it. Let's go to the link thing here. Okay, link ability. Can you not see what level two is? Like how much stat to get there? Damn. Fire. Is that what I'm looking for. Fire. Can you get out of the way so I can get to the chest, please? Monsters. Whoa, what the hell are you chasing? Just get out of my way. That's a lot of mushrooms. My turn. You up. I can that do one this. seems to be a bit more of a defensive target. The more imbalances we get, the better, though. Let's go for that guy, considering he's the highest HP guy. Now, I've got you. My turn. Uh, go for uh, a jelly shoot. Here we go. No shatters there. Go. I'll take you up. It's my turn. Take out the other jelly shroom then. My turn. Go for the small one or that one? Huh? That one. My turn. CP up 50? Well, if we wanted everyone to be maxed Go. out at like every occasion, we definitely got it. I can do this. Then CP gain there. Alright, let's keep on. They're moving. not hard for us to wipe out, are they? Hey, in the meantime, these guys are good experience. Elliot levels up. I get level 13 on everyone just in this spot. Oh, a treasure chest. Yeah, I know. Fire. I'm working my way around there. It's not that they have link battles after all, but still. I'm going to end up having to fight them. Now's fight them this way. We Thank can you. do this. Here we go. Now's our chance. I'll take you up. Quick finish this, please. Hmm. No 
percentage of the goods there. Um, got zero arts. Is there anything that I could really use to be better? I mean, I still feel like just attacking with a normally is way better than using zero arts. Hey! My turn. Now's a chance. I like how the enemies are actually like size-wise different kind of strengths. That's a really nice touch. I know I mentioned it before in that sec, but I can appreciate it on so many levels. My turn. We should keep going. Right, can you get out of my way? Right, Laura leveled up to level 13. Elisa's next. <laughs> Not bad. Oh, how many times are we gonna hear that? Fire. You guys didn't get it there. There's a no treasure chest over there. We can do this. Oh, just one guy? That's good. I'll take it. Seems we get free link thing for every battle after all, so it doesn't matter how many people are in there. At the moment, weirdly enough, all these battles are just giving me tons of healing. He's so close on that bar. It's, a treasure it's like the tiniest sliver of bar on that link up thing. I know I should slash those as well. Let's get them. For a triple My advantage, turn. but whatever. Right. Fire. Hey, Whoa. that's what we want. <laughs> you go on My that turn. one so you can finish it, maybe? Good. My turn. Nice attack, 491. And we got poison. My turn. We're gonna finish it there. Easy, easy. Of course. Will this be the one we need? You still have a lot of training to do. That took ages to get to that chest. Right, there's Elisa level up. Oh, and link level up to level two. We actually got it on that one. We and Elliot reached link level two. They now have finishing blow as an ability. <laughs> I did it! We have new options. Oh, a treasure chest! Yes! Golden Sphere was found in the chest. That is basically the augment of which you already own the art for, isn't it? So we got Golden Sphere, that would give us... It's just the spell, more or less. The Heat Wave, same as well, but Strength plus 5, Defense plus 3. Isn't too bad. Ah, all that fighting. Finally got through it. I don't know what Death Blow is now, and I'm pretty sure we're actually at the end of the forest, if you look, by the fact there's an Orbment Charging Station right here. Oh, hey! There's an Orbment Charging Station! We must be in the most remote reaches of the park. Fire! Oh, I can't pick stuff up when they're talking. That's 100 Mira. Right, so these ones also have Modified Exchange as an option. Have I got to customize? Can I... I do have the U material. So I can actually upgrade to the rapid bow right here right now, except I'm insufficient in the mirror. Yeah, that's good. But I... Damn it! Damn it! I can make quartz, but unfortunately I don't have the money to get the thing. Oh... Why do you do this? EP cuts available now, though. I guess we'll try to unlock some more slots then. So we can upgrade that one for you. That one too. So that's two. Basically, we're being blocked by full elementals now. Except for that. Hmm. Okay, let's upgrade. Let's upgrade this one. Then... This one. Now, we can't do that one because we need to do that one, but we're missing three Blimmin' Sepid for that. But we can... We can't upgrade basically anything else now because of that. And we'll just leave it for those two. And we should be okay. So what courts can we put in? Okay, so I'd need to rejig or take something off someone else. So let's move the information here. And put it over for you. That's not the information, it's the analyze. 
What slot is that again? Okay, I can put that in there. Good. Pyramid scheme funds, what? I guess the EP plus one, or is it Soul Blur? The Soul Blur slot, okay. Cool, we'll put Soul Blur on you then, add some extra speed. I guess we'll keep the information on you over here then. And then what will we give you as a secondary spell? Breath, do you want to do group healing? You've already got a group heal. Uh, you've already got Golden Sphere. You've already got... Like, you've already got Heat Wave. So I guess something like Aqua Bleed would not be a bad idea. Differences in spells. We've got Tear there. We can put a Golden Sphere on you, which doesn't really give us much stats. So we'll take that. That's not too bad. Getting our arts built up a little bit more. And now we need to rest. I wish I had two in a mirror. I wish I had two in a mirror. 2008 Eclipse too, right? Uh, I haven't missed a treasure chest, have I? See, lies. Blatant lies. That's a good time to save then, now that we've done that. But I wish I had two in a mirror. Then I could get full upgrade weapons. Life would be good. Oh, he isn't already. We're level 13. We're ready to go. Let's find out what our boss is. Let's find out who these guys are. <coughs> there they are. <laughs> Not bad for a night's work. And if those idiots don't withdraw that petition, we'll be able to make even more. Don't get carried away now. We get a reward for all this anyway. We're making out just fine as it is. Still, who were those guys? The provincial army seemed happy to go out of their way for them. No idea. But then, I can never figure out what that man's thinking. None of our business either. We just need to be ready to abandon this place at a moment's notice. You're not going anywhere. What? Who's there? Students? I... I know I locked the gate. Don't tell me you broke in. Indeed, we did. It looks like the stolen goods are all here, too. We caught you red-handed. Ah. <laughs> Let's take them out. They're just kids. They should be no match for us. <laughs> and since we're all alone out here, ain't nobody gonna see a thing. Hope you're ready for the beating of your lives. I highly doubt we'll be the ones to endure a beating here today. As long as we make good use of the Arcus's combat links. Yeah, they don't stand a chance. Here we go. Well, shall we begin? But they've got guns, guys. Well, it's usually best for me to start with buffs of some form, but we don't really have that at the moment. So let's look at these fake park rangers and find out that we have specifics on them already gained by the look of it. The items and everything they would give us. The unbalanced efficacies maybe got to be learned a bit more. First of all, we'd want to cast debuffs on them more than anything, wouldn't we? The buffs. Uh, depends how much they move or not. We don't know. Elemental efficacy is the same for everything. So, it's best for me to get stuff like Blessed... Not Blessed Arrow. Flamber Gel. Turn to flames! Burn! Now! Especially when it does exactly what it just did then. My turn! Um, well, I was going to buff... Motivate, but I could have just killed that guy right, to be honest. Let's do this. Yeah, Leave it okay. to me. Ah, we'll both motivate. We need Rosanna and beat, but it looks like we are fairly good at st turn. standing up to them. Oh, we got a critical there as well. Give it up, everyone. And that's our health regen sorted. Of course. Now I'm guessing you can't earth cleave a boat. Oh, you can. Not that I think they're going to be moving. But they're weak! They're nothing compared to the monsters of the world, Red Land. Hold up! Good miss. Good, good miss. Turn to flames! I'm disappointed in you guys, honest. Go! Ha! There! We're just kids, are we? They're right next to each other as well. Oh! Right. What? We did an extra attack on the end of that? Cool. 
Oh, we did it! Well, they can't stand if we unbalance them now. That was done in the blink of an eye. Oh, this has got to be some kind of joke. They're kids. How pitiful. That barely even qualifies as a warm-up. Well, when you're used to instructor Sarah's training exercises, warm-ups take on a whole new meaning. <laughs> That's very true. Bottom line, we won. Fair and square. I'd suggest you surrender yourselves and apologize to everyone in the Grand Market for all the trouble you've caused. And we'll be returning those stolen goods to their rightful owners, too. We would also be very interested to learn who hired you. You must be out of your damned minds if you really think you've won! Hmm? Elliot? What's wrong? I... I don't know. I just... I just thought I heard the sound of a flute. Huh? It sounded like the cry of an enormous beast. What's happening? It's coming this way! So the Vorn Baboon, Groja, appears. <laughs> Giant baboon? Uh, it's huge! I believe we're dealing with the ruler of this forest. What would you suggest, Reen? Uh, well, they may be thieves, but we can't just leave them to die. We're going to have to fight it. Understood. Uh, all right. Hideos, help us! 